Hello everyone, this is Galaxy S24 Ultra, this is the Galaxy S24 US and Canada, and this is the Galaxy S24 Global version. This is Mo. And this is Tanya. And we are going to see which one is going to take better pictures. And videos. And videos. <laughs> In my experience, the S24 and S24 Plus cameras are almost identical. So I selected these three phones for comparison. It is surprising how much difference there is between the Snapdragon and Exynos versions, even though the hardware is the same and only the image processing differs. Welcome to Belvedere. What's the, what's the significance of Belvedere? It has the very famous Klimt, the kiss. Uh, that's a painting, very pretty, where the woman is getting kissed but her neck is like ah. Yeah. Very pretty photo. On 5x zoom, the first thing I noticed in the first picture is that the S24 Ultra retained the details on the tiles much better, which is to be expected since the S24 Ultra has a 5x telephoto lens. The picture on the S24 Snapdragon was a bit grainy but sharper, and the S24 Global was smoother. I also noticed that the red colors on the S24 Exynos on the right side are more saturated. On 10x zoom, the observation is similar. On the right side, the Exynos Global version's color made this golden plate more saturated, while the S24 Ultra's color on the left is more similar to that of the S24 Snapdragon, and the S24 Ultra captured more details. On 3x zoom, the S24 Ultra and S24 Snapdragon produced very similar results, while the S24 Exynos created a very strange artifact on the building, which I cannot fully explain. It seems like the chipset tried to increase the contrast, but kind of overdid it. Then we moved on to take some portrait pictures. I'm doing it. It's a video. <laughs> but it could be a really nice one. The shadows and exposure on the Exynos version on the right make Tanya's skin look a bit smoother. Frankly, I kind of prefer the Exynos version even compared to Ultra in these portrait photos. When taking portrait pictures, I used the burst feature and took the best one out of all of them. To me, it seems like the S24 Exynos photos are sharper and have more contrast. They were also visibly brighter than the other two phones, which have a Snapdragon chipsets. On the selfie camera, I felt the Exynos model made my face a bit less natural and softer than it actually looks like. If you take a close look at the background, you will also notice that the building is also brighter. Here I took some photos of myself to better showcase what I mean. My skin tone has less yellow in it. And if you look at the sky, you will also notice the subtle yellow color is not present in the Exynos version. If you look at the selfie camera, you will notice my skin is softer and less sharp on Exynos compared to the other two phones. In the end, it depends on your own personal preference which photo is better. The observation continued through the entire portrait photography process. Interestingly, Tanya actually preferred the pictures on the Exynos phone compared to the S24 Ultra and S24 Snapdragon, while I personally could not pick a favorite. It probably has something to do with the taste and the fact that Exynos highlights feminine feature better. Also, in this picture, I noticed that the sky also has more contrast on Exynos and is more dramatic. To test the sound quality of the phones, Tanya sang a jazz song for us. Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly see. And I seem to find the happiness I see When we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek When taking pictures of a tree in the bird park, I noticed the Exynos version's contrast in the photos is more dramatic, continuing the trend. The difference become more apparent when zooming in the trunk. I personally prefer the style of the Snapdragon images but this is more of a personal opinion. It seems shadows and highlights are somewhat overblown on Exynos, which sometimes leads to details being omitted from the picture. For example, even though the videos don't look very different at the first glance, a careful look shows that the sun is a bit too bright. 
causing some details to be lost from the texture. If you like this kind of content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna make more comparison videos of different phones in the future. One significant difference between the Ultra and the Base or Plus variant is the ability to change the camera while recording a video, coupled with the Ultra camera's incredible autofocus capabilities. This video effectively showcased a contrast between the cameras and highlights why the Ultra remains supreme. While the Base and Plus variants can compete shoulder to shoulder with the Ultra in terms of the normal lens in daylight, their story changes dramatically when it comes to autofocus and zoom capabilities. The ultra advanced feature in these areas set it apart, showing how great it is in more demanding photographic situations. Also, there are situations where the difference between the cameras is visible, there are also instances where I couldn't spot any differences. For example, when taking a video of this tree, it was hard for me to differentiate between the cameras. I also took some raw, unprocessed footages from the same scene to compare the camera and sensor capabilities. To take raw pictures, you can always use the Pro Mode on Samsung Galaxy phones. Here you can see the three pictures taken in RAW without processing. Both S24 models took almost identical pictures, which is expected since they have identical cameras, while the S24 Ultra image is brighter due to using a different sensor. During daylight, it was very surprising to me how well all the cameras performed. For example, here I used 3 times zoom to capture a building and all of them provided almost identical pictures with great details. Even when zooming in 10 times, the S24 variant produced acceptable results, even though on paper they should not support this zoom level. For instance, even though the text is sharper on the Ultra variant, the S24 base model did a great job capturing the text. Another area where the S24 Ultra completely outperforms the S24 Base and S24 Plus variant is in macro model. The level of details that the S24 Ultra captures is just not comparable to any other Galaxy phones. Here you can see some of these examples. The next photo shows why the highlight contrast in the Exynos variant and the blowing up of shadows and highlights can be a bit problematic. In the first photo, the tree at the bottom was captured too dark, but was still visible. The main problem occurred in the next picture, where the building was too dark and the clouds lost a lot of details in the image processing. I feel like the Exynos phone could do a better job processing these HDR pictures since there was still enough lights outdoor. This high contrast makes the scenes rather dramatic when there are clouds in the sky. Here the S24 Ultra and S24 Snapdragon both captured a very similar tone to the scene, while the S24 Exynos version captured the cloud with more contrast in the background. In the next picture of the tree, I noticed the Exynos variant made the picture brighter, and there was a noticeable difference in exposure and white balance between the Snapdragon and Exynos variants. It was fascinating to see how similarly both the Snapdragon versions behaved even though I was under the impression before conducting this test that the Ultra should behave differently than the other two phones, and that the S24 variant should be more similar. But as you can see, that's not the case. Another picture that highlights the differences between these three variants is this bridge. The S24 Ultra did the best job capturing the bridge, even though the scene was rather complex. The S24 Snapdragon came in second, in my opinion, while Exynos struggled, making the bridge too dark and less visible. I also took a video of the scene. As you can see, the Snapdragon variant on the left and right sides have an easier time highlighting the golden arrow and the romance of it, while the Exynos variants made it more dramatic and drastic by increasing the contrast and making the scene darker than it actually was, which is not really my taste. So Tanya, which one do you think is taking better videos so far? I like these two uh, because of the brightness and the color. This one looks a little more shadowy. Mm. She doesn't know which one is which yet. Now we went for a coffee at a typical Viennese cafe house. And whenever you are there, I kind of recommend you to get Cafe Verlengata. I took some portrait photos, I must say, I like the Exynos version more than the Snapdragons, 
even though I think the Snapdragon's Y balance reflected the scene better. The Exynos version added a nice touch to the portrait photos and Tanya also preferred how she looked in them. The trend of Exynos version taking brighter pictures continued and even in the food mode you can see the rest are lighter on the Exynos version on the right side on this torte from Belvedere. When we went outside the cafe it was almost sunset and we were lucky to capture this amazing scene. A fun fact is that there was a crane in the scene and it moved at just the right time when we wanted to take a picture. To my surprise, the S24 Ultra did not do a great job with the 3 times zoom picture. It was oversaturating the sky to the extent that it didn't look natural anymore. Fortunately, this was not the case when I used the main cameras for taking a video and all three phones did a great job capturing the colors of the scene without exaggerating or oversaturating it. The mood was already out and I was able to take a video of it while maxing out the zoom to 20 times. One thing to note is that you can change the camera dynamically while taking a video on the 24 base variants, but that's not the case for the Ultra. This makes a rather big difference when you want to take pictures of elements in the sky or birds. Also I noticed all cameras turn the sky black the moment they recognize the moon when taking a picture. Here the S24 Exynos did the best job and this high contrast level and deeper blacks the pictures finally paid off. If I increase the exposure of the picture, you will see what I'm talking about. We were near Cars Plot, so I took some pictures before it get too dark. These 10 times zoom pictures highlight the difference between the ultra and base variants, especially in low light settings. When there is more light available in the scene and I change to 3 times zoom level, the pictures look more or less similar. In low light situations, the Exynos selfie camera did a great job compared to the other two phones capturing my face with more details which was quite surprising. On the other hand, when there are some yellow lights in the scene, the Exynos variant makes everything more yellow. For example, you see here that the opera house walls in the picture are more yellow than they actually were. These two other pictures really show the difference between a Snapdragon and Exynos variant and also highlights the stark difference between the zoom on a subject using ultra in light mode compared to S24 base models. On the 3 times zoom, you can once again see the ultra picking up more details in the photo in low light conditions, but that's to be expected since the phone packs better hardware and sensors compared to the base models. In the low light scenario, even though at first glance all cameras produce similar output, a closer look reveals that the S24 Exynos variant did not capture the grass accurately. And the grass looks brown instead of green <laughs> if you look at the right panel. In general I noticed the white balance is sometimes off with the Exynos variant. I continue to take pictures of the opera house from the second floor of the Albertina Museum. Definitely visit there whenever you are in Vienna. Also the good thing about this place is that everybody is a tourist so I don't feel as much social anxiety carrying three phones compared to other places in town. The sky in the Exynos variant in this video was darker and had a deeper black, while the S24 Snapdragon had a bit of a purple tint to the sky. On the other hand, the S24 Ultra and S24 Snapdragon did a better job capturing the green color of the statue, and the Exynos color was a bit too bright. All three phones did a great job capturing a moving tram at night. I'm very excited how far the smartphone capabilities are right now, and also the fact that we are moving away from oversaturated images and videos and we can see the scene as it actually happens in real life. That said, there are still differences in how these three phones capture a scene in terms of color accuracy. For example, look at this sign off from Monet to Picasso in the Albertina Museum. You can clearly see the Exynos variant is brighter, the purple is a bit less deep and the greens also differ compared to the more neutral green colors on the other two phones. Or for example here, if you look at the pictures that the phones got, Ultra got the best result and both blues and greens were more similar to reality. While S24 base Snapdragon still did a good job capturing the greens, but the light blue had too much green on it. While the S24 Exynos kind of dropped the ball and colors are not accurate anymore. I also found out that in normal light conditions, 
the colors look almost identical and there is no difference between them as you can see in this photo. Here you can see another example of a light blue chair. The S24 Ultra and S24 Base Snapdragons both capture it as light blue but Exynos captured it as a white colored chair with a bit of a tint. Last but not least, I also looked pictures of the Gemini using S24 Ultra and this time Galaxy S24 Plus Exynos variant. Interestingly, the S24 Exynos did a better job in terms of color and it was another situation in its aggressive way of adding contrast paid off. The sky color in Ultra was too bright even though it captured more details and more stars. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, you will also like the comparison of S23 to S24 camera that I've done before with Tanya and popping up on the screen right now. Thanks for watching the video and until the next one, bye!